Hello again, and this time we will be starting our webinar, which is the second webinar in our pre-arrival webinar series for the fall 2020 arrival at the University of Iowa. Today's topic is graduate student professionalization and support. Welcome. At the next slide will be a brief welcome message from one of the administrators at the Graduate College. My name is Steve Varga. I'm an Associate Dean in the Graduate College here at the University of Iowa. We look forward to seeing you on our campus soon. We hope you enjoy this webinar on graduate student professionalization and support. Thank you. And Let's talk briefly about the webinar series. If you have not attended our webinar, uh, the first webinar uh, about two weeks ago, uh, the series is an optional webinar series provided to incoming international students before they arrive in Iowa City. The objective of the series is to help new international students to arrange plans for travel to and living in Iowa City, to understand orientation expectations and responsibilities, to transition to student life and academics at the University of Iowa. All webinars are recorded and posted on our website, which is international.uiowa.edu forward slash prearrival hyphen webinar. During the webinar, if you encounter any technical difficulties, please let us know in the chat function. If you have any questions related to today's topic, please use the Q&A function to post your questions. We will answer them live at the end of the webinar as time permits. If you have not received your I-20 or DS-2019 document, please note that you must pay eShip Global shipping fee in order to receive your document. Only when you have this document, you can apply for your respective visa. This information is also contained in the pre-arrival checklist in IHOC, which is ihoc.uiowa.edu. If you have any questions whatsoever about your documents or if you have any concerns, please feel free to contact our orientation team at their email address, which is isss-orientation at uiowa.edu. Next, let's review some important dates. May 1st is the undergraduate admission acceptance. July 10th is the deadline or the date rather uh, for the earliest arrival for graduate students. July 17th is the earliest arrival for undergraduate students. Mandatory orientation for international graduate students will take place August 10th through the 14th. For international undergraduate students, their mandatory orientation is August 17th through 21st. On August 24th, we'll start our fall 2020 semester. Let's do some brief presenter introductions. Lisa? Hi, um, my name is Lisa Kelly. I work in the Graduate College in the Office of Graduate Student Success. And I work with two programs. One is the CERTL program, which is our Center for the Integration of Research, Teaching, and Learning, where I help graduate students become better teachers. And I also work with um, graduate students who are on the job market and want advice and help with uh, job materials and finding opportunities for, uh, to do well on interviews and jobs. Meng Chen. PhD student in second language acquisition program. So I'm here today to uh, talk about some resources uh, you can use as an international student from a student side. Thank you. Uh, we do have a little bit of issue hearing you, Meng Chen. So if you can increase your volume or come closer to the microphone, that would be helpful. Uh, could you hear me now? Yes, that's better. Thank you. Uh, and Okay, go ahead. So uh, let me in, repeat my introduction. So I'm Meng Tian Chen, currently a fifth year PhD student um, at University of Iowa, majoring in second language acquisition. Um, I'm here today to talk about some resources you could use as an international student here from a student side. Thank you. 
All right, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Andrea Siebenman, and I am ISS's advisor and webinar coordinator and moderator for today as well. Lisa, would you like to uh, go ahead and start your presentation? All right. Um, so, um, again, my name is Lisa, and I'm going to talk to you today about um, professional development and why it's important to get to access resources while you're at the university and to think about your, um, your time at the university, your time as a graduate student as um, something that you, a time that you can work towards creating, making yourself the best prepared you can for whatever jobs or careers you're looking for afterwards. So um, I work in the Graduate Success Office and that's an office that is primarily designed to help graduate students navigate graduate school. We do things like helping with fellowships and grants and career opportunities and career uh, materials. We help students find mentor, like kind of navigate how to use mentors and how to think about like who great who advisors should be. And we also help graduate students with things like um, we do workshops and things where we can help you understand more about sort of how to do things like LinkedIn and networking and all kinds of things. So our office and the entire graduate college is, is here to help you as a graduate student. As a grad student, you have been admitted to a program um, such as maybe the history program or the, you know, neuro, uh, uh, I don't know, neuroscience program. And then you're also part of a college. So if you're in history, you'd be in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. And then, but all graduate students who are PhD or master's students, um, not in professional schools, are also part of the graduate college. And so the graduate college is um, a college that basically exists to help graduate students. Um, with, through the graduate college, you'll do things, you know, we'll do orientation at the beginning of the year for everybody. There is, um, this is where at the end of your graduate program, you're gonna deposit your thesis. And there's also people at the graduate college who can help you with the academic affairs office if you're running into problems with your advisor or if you have questions about the university or, or how things work, the graduate college is here to help you. So um, in addition to the research and the teaching and the teaching and the classes you're going to be taking as a graduate student, you want to think about your professional development. You want to think about how you're going to situate yourself and how you're going to prepare for your future career. So all grad students take courses, all grad students engage in research, all grad students potentially publish their research. Um, but you also want to connect to resources outside of your department to enhance your edu educational experience and to, and to sort of set yourself apart and make yourself ready for future jobs and also so that you can be successful while you're in grad school. So I'm going to talk to you today about a few opportunities you have to do professional development. Um, next slide. So these eight areas are areas that you want to think about as you're thinking about your professional development. Um, fellowships are, some, are things you're going to want to apply for throughout graduate school. I'm gonna talk more specifically about those later. Careers, um, also something that you're going to be thinking about from basically the beginning of grad school all the way through. So I'll talk a little bit more about how our office and other offices help you with that. Communication, here I just wanna to touch on the fact that as a grad student, you know, you're going to be getting a lot of communication from the university. You're going to have different areas of the university that you're going to have to communicate with. You're going to have your advisor. You're going to have a director of graduate studies and a program coordinator in your program, all feeding you information and helping you with different aspects of graduate school. It's also really important that you learn to communicate back to them and back to others. Um, as a grad student, if you're having problems or troubles, talking to people about your problems, talking to people about what's going on, can help you solve problems. Um, if you're just, if you keep everything to yourself, they don't necessarily know that you are having issues. Another thing with communication is thinking about the fact that you should be, as you're doing research and, and great projects and things, think about how you're communicating those to broader audiences. Are you able to talk about your project in a grant application? Are you able to talk about your project to a general audience or at a conference? So learning communication skills is very important as a graduate student. Um, the next key is diversity. Um, Iowa City, especially for Iowa, is a fairly diverse institution. If you're teaching, you're going to have students from all around the world. You're going to have students from a variety of different backgrounds and different, um, some of them are more prepared for college. Others have had different backgrounds. So you're going to learn a lot about teaching diverse students. You're also going to learn about working with diverse people. You know, you, 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 you represent some diversity by coming from different countries. You're going to be learning to work with and learn from people from all over the world. 
So it's an opportunity to kind of think about how diversity impacts your life and how you can think clearly about making decisions, let's say in teaching and in research that can add to diversity and can help people sort of think about how issues of diversity impact different people. Wellness is something that's very important as a grad student. You, um, it's vitally important to be successful in graduate school that you continue to take care of yourself. So any habits that you've already started doing that work for you to, to stay healthy, you wanna continue doing as a grad student. Maybe that's going to the gym every day. We have a wonderful gym where you can, there's a rock climbing wall and a lazy river and all kinds of workout equipment. There's also version, there's different satellite gyms on different parts of campus. There's lots of opportunities to walk and run in Iowa City, to bike, it's a good biking town. Um, you know, there's lots of great restaurants and great places where you can get really healthy, good food. Um, and also thinking about your mental health. I, you know, if you're currently talking, you, if you currently use a therapist, do you think that's something that could be useful to you to continue to do that here? We have a university counseling service that's happy to help you um, so that you can be both mentally and physically well, and that will help you be more successful and more able to control your research and control how you react when things happen with your research. Teaching, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that later, but that's another thing that almost everybody in graduate school has some experience, gets some opportunities to teach. And many of you are looking for academic jobs when you finish graduate school, so you wanna to attend to learning how to be the best teacher you can be. Research and publication, uh, that's kind of one of the more obvious ones, but you know, you're gonna be working with primary investigators and advisors and other faculty who can teach you how to do really excellent research, how to publish in top quality journals. They can help you with that. You can, your research is also going to be something you're going to do on, you know, along with help. You're also going to do it on your own. You will learn here how to be a great researcher, and that's an important part of your graduate education. And finally, leadership. Um, you know, you're, as you're entering a master's or a PhD program, you are becoming an expert in your field. And you, but when you graduate, people are going to look to you to be a leader. So, you, so it's important during graduate school to develop some leadership skills and think about how you can situate yourself to be a leader in your field, whether you go into the academy or industry or any other jobs you, cert you want to do. Next slide. So briefly, I'll talk a little bit about teaching. Um, there's lots of opportunities at Iowa to teach um, and to become a better teacher. We have the, there's a certificate. Well, first of all, there's a new TA orientation for the, if you're a first semester TA, if you have a teaching assistantship that involves teaching, you can attend a new TA orientation um, where you can learn a little bit about basic teaching strategies. There's also a certificate in college teaching you can take part in where you can take courses on teaching and that's open to anybody across the entire university. And there's also the program that I'm a part of, the Center for the Integration of Research, Teaching and Learning. And this is held through the Graduate Success Office. And here, our mission in CERTL is to improve undergraduate education by improving graduate student and postdoc teaching. So you can become a better teacher by bringing your research skills to bear on your teaching, to ask questions about your teaching, and then use research and use um, methods that help you, help, you help you make claims about how, you're, how improving your teaching is also improving your students' learning. So many of you will be a teaching assistant at some time in the university, and it's really important to use that opportunity to hone your skills because whether you use them in higher education or in any other industry, teaching is something that teaching and mentoring are something that many of you are going to be involved in for the rest of your careers. Great. Um, I mentioned earlier, like communication is one of those things we want you to focus on. So I wanted to highlight the three minute thesis competition, which is a super fun competition we do where you where graduate students get three minutes and one slide to talk about their research to a broad academic audience. So it's a fun competition and involves, and the winners of our 3MT go on to the regional and potentially even national 3MT competition. Um, you might be thinking, why, why would I do a competition? That sounds like a lot of work. Um, it's a lot of, first of all, it's a lot of fun to engage, to be part of this. Um, people from all across campus do this. But the main sort of takeaway here is that things like this can be great ways to practice um, learning how to pitch your research and how to talk about your research in a short amount of time to a, to a broad audience. Networking is a thing that is very important for you to think about in grad school. Um, you are going to have obviously mentors, you're gonna have advisors, you're gonna have folks in your department that you can talk to about, um, about your research and about your plans. You should always be talking to your advisor about how to, about 
your plans and about what you want out of graduate school and out of your career, but it's also important to look more broadly than just your advisor. You know, there are other people at the university who can be a mentor to you in a variety of ways. If you're interested in teaching, you might find a teaching mentor. If you're interested in a particular kind of research, you might go to find a different person besides your advisor who can be a research mentor for you. If you're interested in learning more about different aspects of the university, you can talk to different people and find out what they're doing. So it's important to build the skills now in graduate school to be, to, uh, uh, for mentorship so that you can learn how to, um, how, to, how to network more effectively. So on this slide here, we're talking about grant writing and careers and fellowships. So the graduate, I mentioned I'm part of the graduate success office. We can help you with, think, we can help you with grant writing and careers and fellowships. So many of you, especially if you're in STEM fields, but actually in many fields, will be writing grants. Um, grants are an important way that you can get money for your research. Um, our advisors, our fellowship and grant advisors can help you create stronger proposals. And the best thing, that we can also help you find where to find these grants for money. And these, our advisors can help you, can help because they think like reviewers. They know how reviewers think. And so they can help you craft a proposal that's really strong that's gonna impress reviewers. We can also help you with careers and fellowships. Fellowships are, way, are out external money that you'll be looking for um, to, again, for money, you know, money to fund your graduate studies or also just fellowships that are prestigious. And we can help, and all students are able to apply for these. We can help you find, you know, find these fellowships early on in your graduate career so that you can apply for those when the time comes to apply for those. And we can help you create strong fellowship applications. We can also work with you, and also if you do apply for fellowships, you can, um, you can then apply, even if you don't get the fellowship, just because you worked with our office and applied for the fellowship, we give small stipends for folks who just apply for fellowships. We also help you with job, and you know, many, you're coming into grad school now, so you're probably not thinking immediately about a job, but as you're think, you know, we can help you think about what careers are a good match for you. We can help you write CVs and resumes and teaching statements and research statements and cover letters um, so that you can be prepared for any kind of jobs you're applying for. We can also help with interviewing skills and things like that. So you wanna think about the graduate college and the graduate success office as places you can go to find more information and to help you, help you navigate. Um, so a couple of other things I wanted to touch on really quickly. Um, there's, besides the graduate college, there's a lot of other places on campus you can go for resources and help. Um, three I want to highlight that are especially useful for international students are the Speaking Center, the Writing Center, and the Conversation Center. The Speaking Center is a place, much like it sounds, is a place you can go to learn how to be a better public speaker. They can help you if you're doing a conference presentation and you want feedback about your public speaking. If you are doing, if you're teaching a course or a TA for a course and you want to see how you sound or make sure that you are presenting yourself well, they can help you with that. If you're doing a big presentation, they can help you with that. Or if you're just wanting basic tips on how to be a good public speaker, the Speaking Center can help you with that. Also, the Writing Center is a place that we encourage everyone from first year undergrads all the way through tenured faculty to use because the Writing Center is a place that can help you with your writing, any kind of academic writing. You can go to them with your prospectus or your dissertation chapters or papers you're writing for courses. And they can help you on multiple levels. They can help you with you know, grammar and syntax and fundamentals, but they can also help you, you know, craft strong arguments and provide, evi provide evidence for your arguments and make sure your papers, you know, the transitions and everything makes sense. Um, it's really important that all people use the Writing Center because it is such a valued resource. There are, um, there are actually several Writing Centers across campus that you can access depending on your department. Um, and the main Writing Center even offers online help. So you can send a paper in, they can edit it, for, they can help you they can help you with some feedback and they'll provide it back online. So, but also making sure to use that early and often because the writing center does get very crowded. And finally, the conversation center. Um, as international students, some of you are coming in with excellent English skills already. Others might be feeling a little bit unsure of their English skills. Um, the conversation center is a place where you can go and you can get a conversation partner where you can practice conversational English. Typically, the partners are either undergraduates or graduate students currently at the university. And it's a great opportunity to just have a casual conversation over coffee or just to kind of learn 
and you can talk about any topic at all. So it's a great chance for you to practice your English and maybe in, you know, your conversation partner can tell you a little bit about US culture and what it's like to be a student here from the domestic student side. And you can maybe share information about your culture. A really nice thing about the conversation center too is that it's open for other people outside the university. So if your partners or children are, are here with you are coming with you and they're worried about their English or they want to practice their English, they can also take part in the conversation center. Um, so it's a place where you can go and just get low, low stakes feedback and practice on English. Um, right, I think next slide. Ah, so before we go to Q&A, um, I actually want to introduce Meng Tian Chen, and she's going to give you some information about the student from the student perspective about resources she's used and things she finds to be important as a student at the university. I'm Meng Tian, and I will talk about some issues that Lisa has already mentioned from a student perspective. Uh, so first, so before you come to the United States, um, please make up your mind that you should be open to the campus life, to the unexpected things. I know that it's hard for the international students, especially someone who hold their scholarship or the fellowship, and they will think, uh, I do not want to sacrifice my time for other maybe extracurricular activities. Uh, I should limit myself to the lab or to the research I'm doing. Um, that is not wrong, but uh, if you open yourself a little bit, you will find that you will have a lot of resources for your professional development and for en enriching your school life. So that's my first suggestion I'm, I, I have for you. And the next, um, the most direct thing you can make use of is the mass email system. So uh, you will receive a lot of emails, for example, during the, maybe the first few weeks, you will receive maybe 30 emails per day. So, uh, and a lot of them have a lot of resources, such as for the ISS email list, they will give you some information about important uh, academic dates and also some workshops held by the ISS. And for, I think another good email list is professional developed newsletter. So they will provide you with some resources for grant writing, grant application, and also some academic workshops held by maybe other departments or the graduate college. So just keep an eye on this, these emails and also these email lists. And the next thing is about the centers that Lisa just talked about. So we have a lot of centers for you to uh, improve your English and also for academic uh, writings and also for the academic um, presentations. So the first one is the writing center. So um, we have a lot of writing centers, but I use two of them um, most frequently. The first one is the major, it's called the, the major writing center. It's called English Writing Center at the English Philosophy Building. So it's open to all the undergraduates and graduate students. So you can make an appointment online. So they will have face-to-face -face tutoring and online feedback, one paper per person per week. And also I think that you can sign up for uh, half an hour every week for your academic writing improvement. And they have that program too. Um, and another center is uh, situated in the typical college, so the business major students. It's called uh, Frank Communication Center. So if you are business students, and if you want to receive a lot of more professional advices or comments from the tutors, you can go to the Frank Center. Um, and another thing is about speaking and conversation centers. So um, speaking centers are more professional. So if you want to prepare for your conference presentation, the three minute thesis, and for some interviews, you can go to the speaking centers. For the conversation center, if you want, would like to hang out with um, English speaking students and their in first language, whose first language is English, and just do some casual talks with them and make friends, you can go to the con conversation centers. Um, okay, so the last thing, the last but the least thing is about extracurricular activities. So uh, this year I'm serving as a GPAC chair in the GPSG. It's called 
graduate and professional student government. Um, and I'm responsible for uh, allocating and reviewing all the applications from student organizations. So um, I have a lot of resources and I can answer your questions regarding the student organization and your um, extracurricular activities in the Q&A section. And that's it. Thank you.